Hi, so how hard is my life right now? I'm staying at the Adelphi, the world's first dessert themed hotel, which means that there's sweet food on the breakfast menu, the lunch menu, the dinner menu, and if you're super spoiled, you can have it in your room as well. Which brings me to the one bad thing about being in Melbourne, the amount of food that I have consumed in the past 24 hours. But it's so hard not to be eating all the time when every nook and cranny of Melbourne is filled with cafes and restaurants. And the vibe here at the moment is awesome with everybody in town for the comedy festival. And one of the things I love is how hidden some of these places are. For example, right now I'm opposite Switchboard. It's literally a Switchboard cupboard that they've converted into a cafe. In fact, it's so tiny that they can only fit the baristas there and they've had to put the seating opposite the walkway. And as you can see, it's not very big itself. But this is just one of the thousands of cafes in Melbourne. In fact, I heard last time they counted, there were more than 2,000 restaurants and cafes within the city. That's a lot of hot chocolate. But my heart is definitely won over by the copious amounts of food available in Melbourne. They say you should always order in an empty stomach. That's what they say, yeah? And I love learning about all the local favourites hidden throughout the city, like Shandong Mama, which has become a smash hit with the locals. Now, Mama, huh? you're a little bit of a legend, and I got told I have to come and visit your restaurant. So tell me, how long have you been around, and why? What makes you so popular? Oh, just uh, she used to come here visit her daughter, and she also wanted to bring the best dumplings, like the traditional dumplings from China, as well as a bit of her touch in there as well. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. And I want to know one more thing: is this a a custom-made dumpling for the city, is that right? She'd never seen parsley before in China. Oh, really? So when she came here, she discovered parsley and she tasted it and made these dumplings just to sort of celebrate. And it seems hideaway hotspots are the way to go because I probably wouldn't have figured out that this little building here is home to restaurants, shops and a rooftop bar. The only downside to all this cool rooftop activity is that I am not fit enough to get to it. Burgers and fries on a rooftop, why not? And I'm not gonna lie, whenever I've seen ads for Melbourne, I've always thought this is kind of what it would be like. Now Melbourne's really into its hidden bars and I've been told that one of the hottest cocktail bars is around here, but there's no sign on the door. So this will be interesting. <laughs> this is in somebody's house because it's pretty late. Oh, hello. Hi. Well, thank you. Is this he Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, wow. Come in. Thank please. you. So after finding the Japanese cocktail bar, I find out that he actually means secret treasure and the cosy main area holds only about 50 people. So all in all, pretty awesome trip for my stomach. And I figure if I eat while I walk, I don't put on any calories. That's how it works, right? If you'd like to watch my Melbourne makeover and watch me trying to learn how to fit into a fashion show, check out the video below.